Got him. Got him. What is going on, guys? Here we are at Galveston Island State Park. We're going to be fishing here for two days. We're going to be fishing the surf, looking for some big fish. We're going to go to the pier, and we're going to hop on our Varla Scooter Eagle One Pro. We're going to go up and down the seawall and look for explosions. When we see explosions, we're going to cast at them and hopefully catch some big fish. Really excited out here. People love when I do these fishing and camping videos, so hopefully we can catch some big fish. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Good morning, everybody. Beautiful morning over here at Galveston Island State Park. Check it out. Beautiful sunrise. It's nice and cool in the morning. The weather has changed in the mornings. It used to be really, really hot and now it just feels really pleasant out here right now. All right, so we are starting off with a rough morning. I went out to my favorite beach access on the west end and it's blocked off because a car got stuck. It hasn't rained for a while, so the sand is really soft. I'm not gonna film their misfortune. I don't think it's appropriate to film them while they're stuck. I don't want to profit or I don't want to exploit their situation at the moment. So I'm not going to film that aspect of it, but they are stuck. Somebody's pulling them out, fortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go further into West Bay, head towards San Luis Pass. And hopefully there's a beach axis that we can fish that people aren't stuck or the sand isn't really soft. Soft isn't really a problem. I have all wheel drive. The problem is that deep soft sand. I don't have a uh, mud tires or anything like that or all terrain. So. Let's go ahead further down and see what happens. Hopefully we can find a better spot to fish because I really want to surf fish. It's flat and this is great conditions for morning shark fishing, morning bull red fishing, whatever. Last resort is if we go to the pier, but I don't want to do that right now. So let's go ahead and try to find a beach axis and let's do it. All right, so we made it to Jamaica Beach. Unfortunately, the other people got stuck. Like I said earlier, we're not going to film their misfortune. I'm not that type of content creator. I don't film to go viral. I film my fishing experiences, not to exploit people or make fun of them. But anyway, so we are at Jamaica Beach. As you see that there is only a few people and most of the people that are out here are actually fishing, which makes it better for us because we all have unwritten rules and courtesy that we follow. So at this point, we didn't catch anything. It was late, it's getting hot. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. And then we're gonna head out in the scooters and hopefully catch something, man. It was, you know, it got pretty bad. It was so bad. It was so bad out there that nothing picked up the baits. We had the mullet on, the gizzard that was on there, not even a hard hit, which I actually pretty grateful for that. I do not want to take off hard hits off my line. So hopefully our luck changes in a little bit. We're going to load up the Varla scooter. And we're going to go out there. We're going to hope into these neighborhoods here. We're going to go in and cast the canals and hopefully we can catch something for dinner. All right, so let's go ahead and take a break and hopefully we can land something in a bit. All right, guys, so here's a Varla Eagle One Pro. We are going to take it on a test ride for fishing. We're going to see if we can top it off at 45 miles per hour. I have a feeling we can get it close to that, 40 at least. So we're going to go ahead and get our backpack. We're going to put our rod in here. I made a mod to attach a rod holder here. So I'll show you how to do that later. But for right now, we're going to take it a quick ride around the neighborhood. We're going to see if we can go around three miles around the island over here to find some fish. All right, let's do it. One of my favorite aspects of this scooter is that it has dual suspension here. Check out the springs on here. This is really good because it gives it a nice smooth ride when you're going through different terrains. I've been able to successfully ride the scooter pretty smooth through concrete, of course, but then gravel, other mixed terrains, grass and brush. Earlier, when I got out of the state park, I had to go through a small patch of thick brush and I was able to power right through that. So here we are in the Galveston seawall and the reason that I parked close to Pleasure Pier is because there are two concrete jetties with holes drilled into the concrete as rod holders so I'd like to go to these and the good thing about this area is because there's two that are I think a mile apart so which is why I parked here because I, I can unload the scooter and go between and back and forth both these jetties because both these jetties can have really good fishing. But I really wanted to mention that the Barla Scooter Eagle One Pro is making it a lot easier for me to fish different spots. This is extremely convenient when you're fishing coastal towns with fishing spots all around the area. You don't have to continue getting in your car, unload, 
move with the scooter you can hop back and forth through different spots and this is what i'm going to demonstrate with you guys here we go from parking from one side of the street and just zip right through the jetty and then after that i ended up going up to different places while i'm in the scooter but that's going to be safe for another video but so far i'm really loving the eagle farlow one pro because it just makes it so convenient to get from spot to spot About time we catch one. Yeah, we're gonna keep these for bait. This is perfect for later. Check it out, y'all. Nice ladyfish. This is perfectly right here. We're gonna use this for bait later on. But see, this is why they're not staying on because we're barely clipping them right here. They're not, look how small their mouth is too. So. They try to clip them right here, and this is where they always come off. Because we probably, when they when we hook them, they, they hook from the top, and they probably pull their lip off. So I don't know. So we'll keep this down here, because we're going to use this for bait. Hopefully we can catch some more. <clears throat> All right, guys, so this is how I got to the jetty here. It's really hot. I'm about to pack it up, actually. But this is the Varla Eagle One Pro. Check it out, y'all. I was able to attach a rod holder here with the heavy duty zip ties. So I attached it there and I got one rod there, very mobile. I'm gonna see if I can find a way to attach more, but for now this works. We got here really fast. People are very impressed by this scooter because it's just so mobile. We can go anywhere with these. You can go up and down the seawall. All right, but it's getting hot. So we're gonna go ahead and pack it up. And uh, we got that ladyfish. We're gonna put it on ice and save it for later. We're gonna fly it out with the drone. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get ready. We're gonna see if we can find some bait out here at this little bay area right here. There's a, some water here that we're gonna try to cast in. I know at night when I walked through there, it was a lot of action. So maybe we might wait till like eight or so and cast it. But for right now, we're gonna get ready. We're gonna go to the pier. Unfortunately, we didn't have any luck this morning at the beach, it was dead. I mean, both of my baits were still, like the only thing that even got to were the crabs. And even at that, <laughs> there was plenty of meat left over. So it was probably too hot. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and start getting ready, get the cameras ready, and uh, figure out what we're going to eat. And uh, after that, we're going to head out to the pier. Hopefully, we catch some monsters like last time. All right, what is going on, everybody? So I had to make a hard decision when I got here. When I pulled up to uh, the seawall, I was contemplating going to Seawolf Park. But as soon as I went up over the hill over 61st and saw that the water was nice, green, kind of flat, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and go to Galveston Fishing Pier. You know, a lot of the times when I come out fishing, that is a big dilemma that I have to face sometimes. Sometimes I don't know where to go. So uh, really depends on the conditions. If I see that it's kind of rough out here on the seawall, then I'll just go ahead and make a left to head to Seawood Park. I usually don't go to 61st Pier. That place is way too cramped. There's too many people that fish there, so I'll just either go here or go to Seawolf. But the majority of the time I'm going to Seawolf, I just now started coming back to 91st Pier. It's been a long time. No, 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 hold on, wait. I was here like last month. I caught a, a spinner shark, so yeah. So check it out. Look at the conditions right now. All right, check it out. Yeah, look at that beautiful weather. The water is pretty clean, and the tide is obviously low, but then also I see a lot of seaweed. I don't know if you can see right there. All that brown stuff right there is seaweed, but hopefully, it's not gonna affect us usually when we're fishing the tea head. So man, I'm really hoping that we can catch something interesting tonight. I didn't bring my big, big rods. They don't fit in my little SUV, but they fit in my other SUV. So I brought shorter rods that have a backbone to them. So hopefully we can catch something. Besides, usually I try to bring a little extra stuff just in case conditions change. So we are always prepared. The badass electric. Put these moves here. So since we got to the pier around sunset, nothing was going on. Sometimes when I come to the pier, it gets kind of slow in the evening. And I casted out some cut mullet, some live sand trout that I caught from under the lines and nothing. It was pretty slow, which is something that I noticed at night, especially during these conditions. It was a four tide day. 
And what I mean by that is there's a high and a low and a high and a low, which means that's four tides. But it's a it's a very subtle flat tide, very stagnant. So the tide kind of stays high and it doesn't change much. You know, we're not at that part of the season where the tides are drastic two foot drops. So but the last time that I was here when we had that kind of tide during the day, at least I caught a really nice six foot something spinner shark, which is pretty hefty. Check it out. This Oh no, my other one's going off. Hold it, time to drown this. Here, somebody reel this in. Here we go. It's gonna be a good day hook too. It's around the lip. Yes, you're around the lip. Got him. So after spending a few hours on the T head, I decided to walk back and I saw homeboy Trey and uh, I saw him casting out a piece of cut mullet with no weight. And I was like, hey, what's he doing? And he goes, look, man, there's a few drum that are circling the area. Check it out. And I was like, oh man, that's sick. I got crab. I don't want to undercut him though. He's really trying to get this drum. You know, I don't want to just bust out with a crab because I know that whatever this fish is, is going to inhale a crab. You know, like crab is like crack <laughs> to these fish. Did you learn that method at the dike? What? <laughs> what this? The three way swivel. <laughs> oh man, it's just some shit I just put on, man. That's the first thing I pulled. I that's how it gets. It'll work. It will. Right there, you see it? Is he gonna flare? Oh, he just went to your way. Fucking spook him. We just did, I think. Yep, he took my shit. That was sick. I'm gonna set this hook right now, bro. Got him. Got him. Got him right there. He might double up. Oh, Got him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna need a net. I'm trying to pull him this one. There he is. Big gar. Got him. At this point. It's pretty dark, it's hard to see, and I apologize for that. Action cameras do not like to film at night, but these fish here are yeah. very smart. They know what they're doing. I like to think that certain fish, such as red drum, reds, uh, black yeah, drum, I, I feel like they're residential, so they only stay within one area in adulthood. So I'm pretty sure these fish here at the pier live here. They've been here around, and they know what's up, they know that if you cast something, they know what's up, you know, they're smart. There he is. So what this drum here did, it swam away from the pier. Big gar. And once it got enough wind, it decided to like swim really fast towards me. And as I am reeling in, I got into a big bind. You got a net? <laughs> I can't believe I choked that hook, sir. Nah, he's trying to go under the pier, man. I'm trying to... Ready? I don't know if that part... Net is long enough, man. Pretty the sure drum to decided around. to swim around the piling, and what happened was that so what he did is it swam into the pier under it, and then once it got to the piling, it took a quick right and then swam out again towards the beach. And this is what it's doing, and I am sure all these drum do this 
when I was fishing the tea head, it said there was a nice school of drums swimming by and they all hooked up, but every single person lost the drum because these drum know what they're doing. And this is exactly what this drum did. Second one. He's whooped though. Yeah, he's done. Holy Man, shit. that was close, dude. Keep going. Dude, it's got like rigs in them. Here, let me see. Here, uh. Four, four, four. Uh, four. Yes. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. Yeah, put it down right there. I'm gonna, I'll tell you when to okay. lift it up. Wait, wait, wait. Drop it, drop it. Yeah. Here we go. I'll get it right here. Right here. Right here. Three, one, two, three. Perfect. There we go. get some slack here on this. It has to be the hardest drum I've ever caught. You think so? Nah, it's like 30. Is it? Oh man, that was... Holy crap. You got a Remora on it. That is crazy. Did it really? Oh, I did. Check out the Mora. What the heck is that? The Remora, they sick on Look the Look at this big ass hook it has. Whoa. It broke somebody off. Check it out. Look at that. Whoa. It broke somebody's oh leader. It's a giant leader. Yeah, but look at my little hook. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whoa, where'd the Remora go? That is. <laughs> is the same thing I'll here? I think this is the same one I caught earlier. Yeah, good soup, good soup. <laughs> oh, wow, that's big. That is crazy, that's dude. A, this is dude, That's a fucking crab cruncher. That was a sick eat. That was pretty sick, man. We just yeah. cast it right at it. What, it has another hook? Yeah. Wow, this guy's been stealing everybody's baits. Uh, I measured him earlier. It was like 22. 22, 22. 30, yeah, it's like, it was 32. Yeah. And oh, you caught 20, this one? Yeah, earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you caught this one earlier? Yeah. Wow, that is crazy. I was, I was not able to take off this hook. It was too tight. <laughs> let me get a picture. <laughs> then we'll let it go. I think it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's someone's line. There you see. go. That's wow. fucking sick. Check it out, yo. I just side casted this big drum. Pitched a crab at it, and this thing here, it went under the pier, it got wrapped around the pylon, the piling, we got it out. Check it out, y'all, big ass drum. Hell yeah. Yo. Oh. That was sick. Come on, get sick. That was a pretty sick eat. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It's still in folks and shit for a while. <laughs> oh yeah. What I mean, this is possibly the hardest drum that I've ever landed and fought. Regardless of the fight, of how it wrapped me in the piling, letting go of this drum was also a challenge because the net was short. <laughs> I was so undergunned for this. So what I had to do at this point is I had to, since I'm, I don't, you know, I mean, I think the net is short like by two feet. So what I had to do is I had to get on the floor and put squeeze my hands and my arms through the bottom railing and try to drop the net from there, which gave me more leverage and more length to drop the net into the water. So after doing that, it was kind of like letting the drum go blindly. I couldn't see that, but then Trey and the other dude were helping me out. They were telling me what to do. And eventually I was able to bounce the drum out of the net and it swam away strong, you know? And I think it's crazy that this drum had three hooks, two hooks in its mouth and some line. This drum, this is, this here, this is the pier boss, you know? This is the this is the boss at the pier that, at the front. This guy has been stealing people's baits for a long time. Cause for a drum to get this size, it at least takes 15 to 20 years. So this guy has been taking everybody's baits 
cutting lines and ramping people under the pilings for a long time and it's just, it's just crazy that I was able to land that but I'm also very happy to land it because it had so many hooks in its mouth so for for you know for the most part it's amazing that I was able to remove these hooks because now it doesn't have any more hooks all right that was absolutely insane I've never done that before that was crazy I've never side tested a piece of crab at a big drum and landed it you know, it got sketchy. I thought I was gonna lose it, but hopefully we got it done. But here's the combo that I use. All right, here's the Okuma Komodo. This is a 300 with a power handle. And then the line is 50 pounds. And then uh, the leader is 30 pound um, soft steel. And then I attach the little power clip here. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see it. So I can switch from lures into uh, other rigs. And this is a custom rain shadow blank, nine foot. This is what we used it, man. This is what we were able to beat down that drum with. Check it out, beautiful combo here. And I just can't believe we landed that. That was absolutely crazy. I'm gonna call it a night. I'm probably gonna be here in the morning. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in the water. And you can see the water is super clear. You can see uh, down to the bottom. And uh, also there's a lot of fish swimming. So I feel like tomorrow's gonna be crazy. So I'm gonna go home and catch some Z's. And I'll see you later. Wow. <laughs> wow, this thing is huge. Normally, when you think of a scooter, you think of a small aluminum pedal scooter, you don't think about this kind of scooter. So we have to unbox it out of the camera. This thing is huge. It took two people to take it out. This thing weighs, what, I think 85 pounds? So it is super heavy duty. This is the Eagle One Pro by Barla. This here goes 45 miles per hour. It has 45 miles per charge. Dual 1,000 watt motors and it has a payload 300 pounds. This is gonna be perfect for urban fishing or fishing that you need to go from spot to spot quickly. With 45 mile per hour speed, you can go anywhere with this fast.